Okay, um, so today we will just continue from what we left off um, the last session. Uh, so today we will try to finish up um, everything and set the, the passes and have it render for the next session where we put everything together. Cool, so a few things that we want to address from um, last week before we, we finish off is like there's some moments that we feel like this moment, the, the, the lighting is not super pretty yet and there's a moment where he's close to the screen left um, corridor it's a bit dark on the, the screen left side um, so we want to try to, to fill up all those areas and then um, next is we want to put in a bit of um, cyan color onto the corridor so it looks more like this style of um, tones and colors so we want to shift the, the palette a bit um, cool so let's proceed Okay, I will start with adding the lights on the, the screen left corridor first. Okay, um, so like I said last week, an easy way we can do is we will just select that, that light. <coughs> just double check. Okay, I'll we'll select the light, duplicate, control D, and then I'll just shift it over. Okay, I'll just put one for now and see if it if it does the, the job. Okay. Then uh, remember from last session we know that after duplicating it will break all our uh, textures and stuff. So just shift the, the color back to white. Then if we want to apply a texture, let's just apply again. Like texture, okay. Then um yeah, let me just check the likes. Okay, um light visible, we don't really see the likes also, so that's fine, we can turn it keep it off. Um uh, with the exposure we we can start with one. Um I'll just remove the volume because um we don't want to fork up the, the whole scene. Okay. Okay, let's do a test render, let's pick a frame as well. So maybe this frame, yeah, this frame. Okay, so which is around here. Okay, let's just take a look um, how it looks like now. Okay, so one thing before I proceed, I will want to remove my atmosphere for now because um, it will just slow down my renders and my interactive session will take a while for it to to. So we will just put this on back later on with a, a separate um, render layer. So I will just keep it off for now. Okay, let's do the render. Okay, um, again, uh, let me just make sure I create an AOV for that. So screen left um, ceiling. Okay, then we go to our render settings, AOV. <coughs> So we can know exactly what that light is doing. So just in left ceiling. Okay, so we just see very minimal. So we would like to increase the exposure. So let's just shift the knob and see. Yeah, maybe we can increase it by maybe two stops. So it's fine. Okay, so we just go back to our light. Uh, okay, let me select the light. Okay, exposure three. The test render. Yeah, it does give a nice. Okay, let's look at the overall image. Cool. So before and after. Now I can't really tell because of the atmosphere that was there. But yeah, we do know that there is a light that is giving us control over the screen left side. So if we want to expose up or down later on in Nuke, we know that there's this option to, to work with. Okay, so now that's there. What we want to do is, oh, we want to work on this, this moment where the hand doesn't feel as nice. So let's just go to first frame. Okay, look at what has happened. Okay, so previously we put in three 
likes and we mute the middle one I if I recall correctly let's just double check okay yeah we mute the <coughs> the middle piece um, so let's just check okay so let's say now um, let's just take a look at Okay, I'll just do a quick re-render re as well, so that we got a comparison. Okay, so this is how it looks with the, the light of first one and the third one. So let's say now if I were to mute the, the first one, so I control H to hide it. And then I um, bring back the middle one and let's just see how it looks like. No, I prefer the the first one. Okay, so bad move. So we'll hide this, or maybe <coughs> let's just keep the second one and we hide the third one and see how it looks like. Okay, we save the image. Oh, this shaping is not bad. But it gets a bit too dark on here. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'll just fall back with the initial one that we had. So we will mute the the middle one and um, okay. Let me just put back all the lights that we need. Hide the middle one. And then we want to rebalance the light so that it it looks um, nicer here. I would guess we need to expose out probably this this like that's closer to him to get a bit more um, values into the hand. Um, so I would say just start with let's just start with one stop and see how it looks. Cool. Uh, before and after. Yeah, it does give a bit more shaping onto the shoulder area as well. I like it. Yep, and then there's this uh, fall off onto the hand, which is nice. That means like it, it can simulate the kind of effect that he's walking out of the light or you no know, into the light, and this part is just nice, the fall off of the light. So we don't have everything just flattened throughout your scene. We we get a bit of variation of in and out of the light, which is nice. Cool. Um. Yeah. I think that works for me. Before and after. Yep. Okay, let's just check other keyframes um, to make sure. Yeah, this works for me as well. Yeah, this screen left side we already added the, the light, so that should help this frame as well. Okay, we already fixed this. Cool. Yeah, okay, so now what we want to do is um continuing uh, to to give some more interest to the shot. So uh, let's just pick some key moments um, okay so say maybe um, this guy intruded this um, spaceship or or whatever so um, there is this alarm that sounds off and we want to simulate that um, there's this red color light that is um, going on which is blinking or, or anything um, what we can do now is we'll create a, a constant light and then we can animate that modulation in new which will be easier to control rather than you set a keyframe here and then later it doesn't look nice um, you need to re-render so it's, it's better to give yourself give yourself the, the control so you can tweak however you want to modulate the light fast or slow or no, uh, in new and it does not require you to, to re-render so um, Cool, I will, maybe I pick this frame, I'll just do a test render and see how it looks like first. Okay, and then say we want a, a light from the, the left corridor and the right corridor. So I will start creating my own lights. So let me just delete this. Okay, create an area light. Okay. So this will be my red light, right? Okay, we'll give this a uh, uh, an AOV. 
so this is my screen left so sl red light okay then um go into my alvis we'll create one okay so now um let's just create a group for it so it's um so like group okay so always keep your scene um tidy so if you're if you happen to pass your file around the artist that picks up your file does not have a headache um, trying to figure out what you have done to your to your shot okay cool so i will just scale up um, the area light and one tips that i i mean one trick that i like to do is i will look through the light itself so I'll select the light source go to panel look through the light then i will select my character and oh, probably it's, it's reference so yeah i will just if it's not um reference i can select it and i'll frame to it and then um we we'll just position it so we want this to give a nice rim onto the character so i assume it will be somewhere around this angle okay then go to your light so okay let's give it some exposure okay let's work with three for now and we want the red light so let's put the okay and save this and do a render okay nothing is happening let's just double check to make sure that light is doing something or it's just exposure yeah it's doing something like you see when i expose up is there's some information there just that it's probably not bright enough so we will increase say five okay continue let's render it's not it's not bright enough okay let's just go uh, crazy by oh we see something but um let's just check the eo bit so yeah it's doing something but it's too rim i guess i will just shift it a bit more to the right okay let's just check how it looks okay nice um probably i want to expose up a bit more like yeah this one and uh one stop one and one quarter stop more so 11.25 cool yeah, let's just view the whole image cool yeah gives a nice um, nice rim to him um, yeah probably it's too rim um, looking I think I probably need to shift it a bit more so we read it um, a bit more on the face so first thing now it feels a bit too sharp the highlights um, I want to try to soften the look so I will just increase my my light size a little bit more okay that will also help to um, get a bit more exposure to the, to the face so I will just rotate the, the light a bit more so now it's a bit more side light let's see cool yeah it gives a bit more real on the face and it does have nice shape you see it's side plate and it does not flatten out his his face so it's nice okay just look at overall cool yep so we want we have one from screen left now and we want to do one from screen right as well so um okay let's just do the lazy way we just duplicate this red light control d and then let's just rename this the screen right one and rename the first one the screen left one Okay, we'll go to the screen right one. Remember to change your AOV name so that they both don't appear in the same way. AOV. Okay, RGB underscore. Okay, then select the light, look through the light. Okay, we'll just rotate it around and have it come from this corridor as well. So same thing, we want to, to give that that rim look and 
hopefully the light is um, shining through so we get some of the colors onto the ground as well so it breaks up this um, very bluish uh, purple tone that we have here so it, it gives some more color variation into your scene okay just try something like that um, save this do a test render cool now you see it introduce a bit more the, the colors into the scene so now let's just take a look at the UV itself ah it's probably too too dark but wait the AOV is not coming through um they spell wrongly let me just double check screen right red light screen right red light and oh nah the naming is wrong that's why the AOV is not showing up correctly just change this okay do that again cool now you see that contribution Cool. So we probably want to increase it a bit more like, like what we had on the left side. So maybe say yeah, another one stop, two stops. I think two stop is fine. Okay, so go to your light attribute editor. Okay, um and increase the exposure by two stops. So say this one is 13. Okay, let me just stop the the render first. Okay, 13.25. Test render, cool, it's nice. Let's look at the overall image as well. Cool, yeah, so now you see it does give a bit more that the color variation into a scene. Um, cool. Um, okay, so now we have introduced new colors, and um, okay, so. What I would like to do now is tr start to introduce uh, a different tone onto this um, ceiling light so that we get a bit more the, the cyan look like our reference. Cool. So now I will go back onto. Okay. Okay. One thing to take note like when you look through your panel and you get the, the position that you want, always remember to change back to your perspective view and before you start shifting things around. If not, later you'll just lose the position and you'll. You will just need to undo um, some of the steps that you have already done. Okay, so previously we added a, a color temperature to the, the middle one um, on the previous session before we end it, I think. Yes, we added a color temperature. So now um, we just want to maybe not use the color temperature and we want to shift the colors of the light up itself. So for now, I will just break away the, the texture. I will shift the color to a more cyan look. Okay, so this looks, let's just look at the reference again. Probably it's a touch too green. We'll shift the blue a bit more. Okay, so something like that. Okay, then um, let's just choose a frame that will we'll see it more. So maybe towards the end of the shot. Cool. Um, okay, and we'll do a test render. Uh, yes. <clears throat> cool. Now it, it does add some interest into this the scene. Now you get a bit more different color variation. Previously the the colors onto him is like the same as the ground. So now, but it's just a touch too saturated for my liking let's just check the reference here you see it's it's green or it's cyan but it's not so saturated so i will just reduce the saturation um, a little bit okay save it and then do a test render i always like to save um before i do a test render every time i make a change so i know exactly if i compare um how does it look so rather than you you need to try to remember what you have done so uh, this is a good uh, tip that if you guys are following, you should um, have the habit of because it's free, right? It doesn't it doesn't matter how many how many times you save. So um, that way you can actually see exactly what you have done to your scene. Okay. So now it's probably a touch 
Nah, I prefer it to be a bit more. So see now, at least we, we got a comparison, then we can ship it accordingly. Okay, then let's just test render again. Okay, so before and after. Cool, yeah, I think this is fine. It's like the in-between the, the really saturated one and the two pale one. Yeah, so I think I like this color. Okay, so I will just apply this color onto the rest of the, the lights that we had. So like this one. Let's open up the okay brick connection. And we'll pick the color that we use. Okay, so do the same for the left side as well. Okay, so again uh, take a snapshot and do interactive render. Cool. Okay, let's just look at the before and after. Yeah, hmm. maybe it's now everything feels a bit green onto him as well. I quite like what we had. Okay, we can just pretend like this type of, at this point of time, like we can just direct how the, the lights are, the different colors, right? Because they are smaller, we can just pretend they use a different color for that, the, the smaller ones. So I would say I like the middle one to be the green one and the, maybe the side ones, not so green. Um, I can shift it to maybe, maybe you can have it green, but maybe it's just not as, um, saturated as it was in the, the middle one so okay we'll just change this as well okay do a test render okay i'll save this and then do a test render cool. yeah at least we preserve a bit of the, the skin tone color like if not we are blasting too much the cyan color onto the, the skin tone it makes it not so nice yeah we still have a bit of the green and we are preserving the, the skin tone color so yeah I like it so cool yeah so this is the color that we we'll go with and we need to tweak the colors um, for the, the different corridors right so we we'll need to go in and then we assume these are the, the small small ones as well so we will use the not so saturated one then same for this okay again um, do a test render okay. yeah you shouldn't change much you should just um, very subtly add a bit of color variation into the the lights let's just double check the screen right ceiling yeah it adds a bit of color I think we have more than one lights there that was added so we need to shift the color as well yeah like like it's good that you know we have different AOVs now we can, we can see we can tell that you know, one of the light didn't get colored if not uh, we look at the overall picture we will assume oh the color we changed and we didn't realize that we missed out one of the, the lights now that we have the AOV itself we can tell no yeah, I changed one of the light, but one of them are still the neutral one. Cool, so test render. Yep, so we get all the lights, the color that we want. Okay, let's just double check this, this, this area it looks like it's coming from the screen left. Ceiling? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't mind too much. Let's check the ceiling again. Okay, this is nice. Two. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we just need to get it like 90% there and the rest we can just massage it like the color if you want to shift it a little bit in, in Nuke, we can still do it. Let's do that. Cool. And then now again, we want to check the, the other frames to, to make sure that it looks nice as well. So we want to check the first frame again to put in the colors. So we'll just go to the first frame. Okay. Um, let me just do a test render again 
okay so now you can see that it's clearly the the neutral white one so we want to shift the color This one, uh, change it to the less saturated one, and this one again, less saturated one. Cool. Okay, take a snapshot, just render again. Oh, ah, no, but this side feels a bit really green. Let's just compare to what. Yeah, feels a touch too saturated here. Yeah, let's just check the lights itself. Did we have a front ceiling? Yeah, okay. Yeah, feels a touch. Mm. Well, again, we can change the color in new, but I think I'll keep it slightly less saturated um, for this moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just don't want to make up the whole scene to feel it's super sign. Like if I look at my reference uh, again, like um, it's it's not like really cyan. The, the, you still feel the... Uh, yeah, basically it's not so sad. Okay, so cool. I like uh, what where we are heading. So now um, let's just... Mm, just double check everything. Yeah, I see it does give a nice shaping onto the the egg board as well with the red light. Yeah, maybe during this pose, let's just check the red color light and see. Oh, I don't have the AOV. Yeah, the thing about the snapshot, you don't get to view your um, AOV. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think one thing is just. Uh, a pity that we do not get a bit of the, the red light out of the face that will looks nice but um, overall i like it so i i will see later on after we, we do a first pass rendering and see if everything works out like how i want it to be if not i can come back and re-render that light um to to add on um later on so basically i can re-render that light and mute the what is currently there and just change to a new light so i don't need to re-render the whole scene again okay so now this is um the the look that we are going for and uh, then now i think the final touches is just add a bit more um the emissive stuff to to give a bit more interest to, to the shot so just the, the final touches yeah. before that let me just uh, quickly save my file okay uh another thing that i want to highlight is um always um, keep incrementing your, your uh, working file so you save a, a newer version every time you do some changes so again the, the file size is not that huge and if something happens you, you always have a, a previous version that is not too far apart for you to to fall back on rather than if you keep saving over a, a single file and it gets corrupt at some point then um, you, you start crying at the end of the the at that point of time um, then um, it doesn't help right um, so um, always good to have a, a, some backups okay so now let's just go in and add a bit more emissive so maybe you know this this hole here we can put in uh, some emissive like all this we can introduce some emissive and maybe the buttons below we can uh, put in some as well okay let's just try um, I, I honestly I don't know how it looks so let's just give it a try and see uh, if it if it works out if it if not then we can always remove it um, so I choose a face okay then we can just do a simple uh, modeling go to our mesh we can duplicate that mesh okay then if we go into it we get the uh, small bits okay so um we can just use a okay let's just assign a new shader okay just let's just use the standard surface okay we can remove 
Mm, probably we don't need all this, right? The spectacular stuff. And we can just go to emissive and we can... Let's see what color should we put it. Let's just look at our reference again. Okay, it's a quite neutral kind. So I think mm, I don't mind keep it as white. Maybe I just tint it very, very slightly. Okay, then uh, of course we need to give it some weight. Uh, okay, this one we can adjust later uh, to see how bright we want the emissive to look. So now let's just do a test render and see how it looks like first. Okay, nothing. Uh, let's just zoom in and make sure that piece. Okay, where's my manipulator? Okay, let's just shift it out. Very tiny. Uh, okay, now it's probably too much. Um, shift it back so we see it. Okay, then do a test render. Cool. Okay, so now it looks like a white constant and it's, it doesn't feel like an emissive. Okay. Another tip that you guys um, say um, we are working on just this section and we want to get this to look like uh, we can always press shift left mouse click um, to select the region so our interactive session does not always resolve the full image we can just uh, interactively um, basically um, check this region okay so go back to the uh, let's go back to the material then okay, we can shift the width and just okay, let's take a step shot. Okay, you can see that it becomes brighter, nice. Cool, yeah. Okay, so now we know that this is working, we can just apply this um material to uh, the rest of the, the four. So we can just give this um give it the initiative. Okay, then we have to apply. Okay, let's change this back to object mode. Okay, just select the rest of it. Then um, okay, we can assign favorite material or existing material. Then we choose our emissive shader here. Okay, so they are all there. We just need to shift them up very slightly. And then let's just remove the region render we can just click here and then go cool um yeah i'm not sure if it's really looking like how i want it to be mm, meh maybe that's um about the idea but you guys know you can you can do this now um yeah, it just feels very stick on. Um, I don't really like the, the look of it, so I will just remove it. Okay, I think we'll just add on a few bits on the, the bottom of the, the panels, like here. And yeah, let's see how it looks. So, do this. Uh, set the face. Go to the mesh duplicate. Okay, let's just select the buttons and we just assign the emissive shader that we already created and see how it looks like. Cool, yeah. Um, maybe it's a touch too like in the face, right? So I probably want to reduce the the bit of it a bit. And then um, I also want to maybe change maybe one of it the colors to a different one. So maybe let's just pick the middle one. Maybe shift this to a different color so we we'll assign new material. Okay, and we set the surface. This will be my orange emissive shader. Okay, to make all the base and specular control emission. Emissive color we can choose orange then wait did I use the correct shader? Oh I use a hair shader come on um let's do it again assign new material shader okay then the surface okay 
this is my orange let me see shader one I think I need to delete the previous one okay and yep yeah, let's just take a look oh I need to increase the weight as well cool at least there's some variation to that the colors and then just zoom out yeah mm. okay I think later on we can just add a bit of glow in in nuke to just break out all this uh, very straight edge here yeah I'm not buying the white ones I don't know um, maybe we just dim the white ones uh, let's just go to this material attributes um, and then where's my material okay maybe we just make it not so bright again so it's not so in the face does it look better yeah maybe Okay, of course a lot of fine tuning that um you can tweak um okay and we can add a bit more as well here let's see the the screen right um corridor if we can add something yeah we already added the red color ones mm. yeah nothing much um uh, that we can play with yeah, I guess we can just um, duplicate this four. We can just shift it over. Okay, make sure it lines up with what you have. Nope, they are, they are different size as well. Oh, I think the lazy way doesn't work. I need to um, do them properly. So, go to select the face. Again, I will just <coughs> get them. It's for maybe I assign a new one so I, I have this. Uh, no, shouldn't have too many variations. Okay, let's just keep them the white ones. So I'll just assign existing material and then emissive shader. Okay, and then um, let's just do for the last bit. Okay, then duplicate. And maybe we want to have a different color variation in this one. Um, so I will just keep maybe two of them, the white ones, and then two of them, the orange one. Yeah. Okay, let's just do a quick test render to see everything. Yeah, okay, there's some details in the scene. Yeah, uh, I don't, uh, I don't like this this dull pale looking thing. Now, um, let me just go in, give it a bit more weight. Okay, okay, and then let's just take a look at the scene again. Just see, if we can add a bit more stuff. Yeah, I think all these, all these gaps here. I think, let's try. Um, if we add in emissive in between if it helps to make the scene looks cool just now we did put ones in the middle but it feels like it's 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 stuck on to the the, the geometry and then it's, it's grabbing too much attention um there so i i want the audience to be looking at my character instead so having a really bright emissive in the, in the background doesn't doesn't really help okay so let's just try doing it for here Okay. 
Okay, I've selected all the faces, just make sure I never miss any. Okay, then um, just quickly duplicate them and let's see where is it. Yeah, this should be all of it. Okay, just maybe shift them down very slightly. Okay, and then um, we'll assign a new uh, material. Again, we want to use the standard surface. Um, I don't want to reuse the white one because this one we we never kept it the full um energy. So I want to create one that has the full energy. So this one will be my white. Let me see. Shader. Okay, so it's the full energy. Okay, let's just test it and see how it looks. Cool, yeah, it does adds a bit more detail into the scene, I think. Yeah, I I don't mind that we can keep it. It's at least it's not so offensive in the middle that it's like stuck on. Yeah, cool. I like it. Um, yeah, I guess then we can add it to to the to the bottom bits as well, and then uh, I don't do it here. I just keep it at the top and bottom maybe, and then um, let's just see if we have something to play with in the foreground. Um, Dot area as well. Okay, let's just do it for the bottom parts. Okay, for just um, working more, uh, I will just hide the rigs for now uh, so that I can see everything properly. Okay, then again, same thing, we select the faces. shift them up very slightly so that they are not overlapping the current geometry cool then same thing we just apply the shader that we created so the white emissive shader okay um, from the looks it looks like some of them are still on oh no, the changes one cool yep uh, Let's see if I can do it the lazy way. I'll just duplicate all this geometry, Control D, and shift them over to the left side. Okay, looks like we can. Okay, I need to shift it a bit more. Yeah, tiny bit more. Cool. Yeah. Then I don't think we get. Uh, I don't think we get to see any of the top parts, so I think that's fine. So let's just do a quick render. Oh, we actually don't see the bottom parts, parts as well. Hmm, interesting. But say we want to forcefully um, see something there. Let's just shift it up a bit more. Of course, um, need to make sure that it makes sense. Um, do not just put it on floating on top. Um, not, not asking you to do that. So yeah, so by shifting, I will get a bit of um, information there. So that's nice. Um, yeah, so it, it adds a bit of detail, and then later in in new we can add a bit of glow and stuff. We can even flare um, the, the ceiling light if we want. Um, cool. Now. Let's take a look at the foreground corridor. Maybe the foreground corridor we can do it for here. Um, but then consistency wise we actually um this is a it's like a pillar right and this is like the, the gate section so 
we can argue that uh, the gate section has it but the pillar section doesn't have it maybe um, let's just try and see if it looks cool if it looks cool then we'll just stick with it okay select the faces edit mesh and duplicate it okay then we want to select the, the mesh Okay, again, we just want to shift it out slightly and assign the white missing. Cool. Okay, let's just do a quick check to see if it looks nice. Yeah, okay, not too offensive, uh, but it still feels really stuck on there to me. But maybe with the character blocking some of it uh some parts of it so it's unhide our character it should block some of it so it might not look as stuck on here so well, maybe let's just keep it for now um okay then we just do for the rest of that so the the gate area we have it all with the emissive a little bit and just add emissive shader okay and then okay, probably for the last bits we add for this this side so that they, they keep the consistency there so we have it on the other the gates where there is this hole and the pillar ones we, we do not have it Oh, actually we don't really see it on the screen left side so um, okay let's just zoom into this okay face okay and it mesh give it Um, the reason that I'm duplicating and not splitting it because um, at some point, let's say I don't like the idea, I can just um, delete or mute whatever that I've um, duplicated instead of like, you no, know, I need to go in and retexture or you know, uh, do something to get back what it originally was. Okay, so sign up what you see. Cool, so I guess that's all the stuff that we could have added into the scene let's just do a quick check yeah cool yeah I think with a bit of glow and stuff it probably looks nice just test some other frame as well Does give a bit of uh, interest into the scene. Cool. Uh, let's see. Cool. Yeah. Let's just test a frame with atmosphere as well. Uh, yeah. 
That's good. Okay, let's just save this. Take a look. Whoa. Cool. So we have created a lot more lights and all those lights are um, adding to all the, the atmosphere that we um, put in. So we want to go in and maybe decrease some of it. Um, so let's just um, go into here. Okay. Um, so the red lights are the ones that's... Uh, let's just select the lights. Okay. Go to attribute editor shape and then we can reduce the, the volume contribution. Maybe we, we want to maybe keep some of it but maybe not so um fogging up the whole scene. So just save this. Do another test render. Ah the the one that has more feels more dramatic. Yeah, I probably will keep it a bit more. Yep. I think this I can do with this, and then at least it's not um fogging up my whole scene quite a lot. Yeah, I think I like this. Um, cool. Yeah. So at this part of time, um, once I'm, I'm, let's say I'm happy with this lighting. Um, I can proceed with uh, splitting out all my render layers. 